Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week uh, of classes. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that you've given us. Just come together and study your word. I pray, God, even as we look at this course and the topic for today, the covenants and understanding more about you, about the covenants that you have kept for us, O oh God. Lord, we want to thank you and praise you that you are a God who keeps his covenant. Lord, we as your children, we, we pray, God, that we will, Lord, walk in your ways, that we will, Lord, hear you. And, and Lord, we just surrender each one of us into your hands, O oh God. We pray, God, for wisdom, for clarity. Uh, I pray, God, that even as we study this, that uh, you will bring things to remembrance, that the Holy Spirit will enable us to understand and to, uh, and to Lord, to really uh, understand that you alone are a covenant-keeping God. And, Lord, we thank you for this time. We submit these two hours uh, of, of study into your hands, Lord. We, we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, as usual, uh, what we normally do is before we start the session, let's look at a quick review of what we did last week. Uh, last week, we started off with chapter one. We looked at understanding covenants uh, that, you know, we, we laid the foundation saying that God is a God who keeps his covenant. Whether we keep it or not, God keeps his covenant, right? And we looked at the word, the Greek word itself, covenant, which uh, which is used uh, as berit. Uh, that that means a God who will keep covenant, a God who is who who wants to have a covenant relationship with us. We looked at aspects of how God is a relational God, right? All through the Old Testament, uh, there were many uh, covenants that were you know, uh, set up by the Lord. And and we looked at a few of them as well. We looked at the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, we saw how uh, God called Noah as well. And then the Davidic covenant. And also uh, the in the New Testament, uh, we are part of the Messianic covenant. So uh, there were also points wherein we saw the nature of God's covenant with man. Uh, God is the initiator. It's not like we say, okay, God, can I make a covenant now? God initiates the covenant and he's the keeper of the covenant, right? Man, on the other hand, our part is to, when we believe in God, when we believe in the Lord Jesus, we are entering, we're saying, yes, God, I believe and I enter into the covenant which you have for me, right? And uh, very importantly, we looked at Deuteronomy 28, uh, just a few portions we saw uh, last week, how uh, God is telling the people of Israel, they've come out of Egypt and the word, and he's reminding them, he's reminding the people of uh, Israel, look, I'm a God who keeps the covenant, but if you, there are blessings when you keep the covenant, but if you don't keep the covenant, there are curses. And so Deuteronomy 28 very beautifully writes about what happens when we, uh, you know, uh, are followers of the covenant, we obey the covenant, and what happens when we don't, right? Uh, it's not like, you know, uh, uh, God is putting off that curses. What happens is we are coming out or uh, not aligning ourselves to what God wants for us. And so we open ourselves to the work of the enemy. And so that's when curses come in. Uh, God does not allow dual uh, commitments. Right? We looked at that where, you know, we can't say, you know, uh, Monday to Friday, I'll be this. Saturday and Sunday, I'll be this person. We can't be two different people. Uh, or we can't say, uh, I'll do part of this covenant and part of the, uh, you know, the other covenant as well. Uh, meaning uh, do things that is holy and do things that are unholy. Now, God is not pleased with that, right? That's a settled fact. God says, I am a jealous God. And, and, and so today, even as we move on, we'll go on to chapter two uh, and we look at some of the covenant names, right? Uh, let me just 
project the notes so that we can all follow along. Yeah. Just a minute, please. Sorry, uh, I just tried it, but it's not showing up again to me. Okay, uh, everyone able to see the screen now? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, every time I try it, and when I think when people enter the enter the call, it you know it doesn't show on the other tab. So, okay. Uh, let me just get to chapter two. All right, chapter two. God's covenant names, right? Now, we settle the fact that God of the Bible is a covenant God. He's a God who makes a covenant, and uh, this is his nature. You know, it's not like God makes it and he says, uh, I've changed my mind. No, he, in his nature, he's a God who keeps it. Let's read Exodus chapter 6, verse 3 to 5. Let's go ahead. Any one of you can read I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but my name, Lord, I was not known him, known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Amen. Thank you, John. Right now, when we look at this Exodus chapter six, God is talking to Moses, and he's he has a, you know, he has a plan for Moses. He's got a you know thing for Moses to do where he has to go bring the people out of Egypt. But what does he tell Moses? He says to Moses, "I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty." Right? He's saying, now, this is not something that I am coming up with right now. Right? This is a covenant that I've made earlier on. And as God Almighty, I will keep my part of the covenant. Right? Now, we must understand that when God makes a covenant to his people, all through the Old Testament, and we also see it now, there will be times when God will use different people to fulfill the covenant that he has promised. He made a covenant to Abraham that I will bring them to the land, a land that is flowing with milk and honey, their own land. And God is telling Moses, look, I've made this covenant with Abraham and to his, his son and his, uh, his generation that you will go into the promised land. But now it's many years and you're all in bondage in Egypt. So Moses, gear up. This is what you got to do. You got to go and bring the people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt into the promised land. Why? Verse 5. I love that last part. Verse 5. I have remembered my covenant. So wonderful. right? Now, the word Lord 
in tetragrammaton um, is is now you you do see that right? It's y h w h. Now the way we pronounce it, uh, the actual pronunciation is uh, yadhe vadhe, right? Now this is the highest form of adoration. Uh, the four letter Hebrew word is the highest form of adoration uh, uh, that you can give God. It is said that the scribes uh, who, uh, you know, during the Old Testament, they would sit and make copies of scriptures, right? And the scribes, every time the word would come, there was the sense of awe. There was the sense of, uh, you know, how minute we are and the holiness of God. The, the Lord is God, right? And, and then... Uh, there are different forms accepted. There's Jehovah, Yehovah, and Yahweh. But but the original Hebrew is Yadhe Wadhe, which means the Lord Almighty, the Great God. Right now, interestingly, this is the name that God chose for Himself, and by which He revealed Himself to people. Right uh, when when we see this. When he brought the people out of Israel as well, sorry, out of Egypt, God revealed Himself as the Lord, the the God of Israel, the 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 one who is you know Almighty, the Lord God, and not only to the to Moses, but after that later on he goes on, you know, revealing Himself with these aspects. Right, that he is the God, he is the Lord Almighty, right? And Jehovah, that is, or Jehovah, is the God who is eternal, right? Sometimes we say, uh, who created God? No, no, God is beyond time, beyond matter, beyond space. If God is created, he's not eternal because. You know, there, if somebody something is created, it has to end as well. God is eternal. He's He's telling the people uh, when He's revealing Himself when He says, "I'm Yadev Wade, He's saying, "I'm eternal. I'm self-existent. Nobody created me, nor do uh, nobody can stop me from doing my, the things that I want to do. I'm self-existent." Uh, and I love that verse in Romans three seventeen where it says. He calls things that are not there as if they are there, self-existent, right? So picture this, the God, the, the Lord God, Yahweh, and he's revealing himself to the people of Israel all through the Old Testament. And he's saying, I'm eternal, I'm self-existent, right? Nobody can change who I am and what I can do. It's up to me. And he again says, I'm immutable, which means unchangeable, absolute, uh, uh, indisputable. Nobody can do anything about it. Right? Unchangeable. I am the same yesterday, today, forevermore. The one who keeps his covenant. Now, when we look at the New Testament, the Lord Jesus, when he was you know, ministering to the people, remember they came, they asked him, uh, uh, you know, Jesus said, uh, I'll, I'll this temple, we'll, we'll destroy this temple and, uh, and raise it up in three days. And then he says, you know, our forefathers, you know, Abraham did this and that. And what did Jesus say? Before Abraham was, I am. That was a powerful revelation of who he was. He was revealing himself as his covenant name. He's saying, hey, I was existent even before time. I was there with the Father. When even the Apostle Paul says, Christ crucified before the foundation of the world, it was God revealing himself, saying, hey, I'm a God who keeps the covenant. When I made the covenant in the Garden of Eden and I said, uh, my seed will crush the serpent's head, and it did so, Christ crucified before the foundation of the world. So through time, God revealed himself with many names. And with all these different aspects of God, 
more and more of his presence, of his, of who he is, is revealed in our lives. What he does to his people, what he bestows upon each one of us. I'm sure all of us have testimonies of what God has done for us. But now let's look at a few covenant names of God. Now, even as we look at these names, I want to encourage each one of you, right? It's not about, you know, by hearting all the names that are there and say, okay, I know all the names. No, it is about experiencing it. Let it become a revelation in our hearts. Right? That's when, you know, the word of God will mean, you know, it will be much stronger in our lives. Right? So, so don't look at it as a, you know, these 10 or 12 names I need to note by heart. Uh, uh, and, but it should be more of a revelation inside us. Right? So let's look at a few names here. Jehovah Elohim, the eternal creator. Right? Eternal creator. Adonai, Jehovah, the Lord, our sovereign and master Lord. You know, Adonai, Jehovah, the word sovereign means somebody who is in complete control. Nobody can change his plans or purposes. He's sovereign, right? Like, for example, right now, we look at the pandemic, we look at 22 we never knew that you know we have these new variants and all these things coming up but you and i as believers we can say god you are a covenant keeping god and you are adonai jehovah which means lord you are sovereign over this entire situation you are sovereign right so god is going to keep his side of the covenant because that's in his name that's in his nature and we are to believe it right <laughs> A oh, very common one, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will see and provide. I'm sure the Lord has been our Jehovah Jireh many a times. Sometimes we knowingly see it. Sometimes we he has given it to us, but we have not realized it, it, it at all. But he's a Jehovah Jireh. He's a Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, our banner. Also, some translation says, the Lord, our victory banner. Right? He grants us victory. Now, when we look in the Old Testament, uh, the people of Israel have come out. It was not an easy task. You know, we, we study that. You know, it, It's not like they came out of Egypt and just walked into the promised land. No. There were battles that had to be fought. There were some battles that were easy, some battles were difficult. If you picture how they came into, you know, when they came to Jericho, this whole wall ahead of them. But Jehovah says, I am Jehovah Nissi. I am the Lord, your banner, and I will grant you victory. And the same thing happened in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. The Lord Jesus, you know, he... Wherever he went, there was victory, right? Uh, uh, imagine this. Jesus is on the cross. He's dying uh, over. It's the end of his life. What does he say? It is finished. Now, he said it is finished not because, okay, my, uh, you know, he's not saying physically it is finished, but he's saying it is done. Victory is, is ours. It is finished. It is accomplished. The work that I've come here for is accomplished. There's victory. When we look at the cross, it looks as a failure. It looks like, uh, you know, there was so much of hate and and uh, all these, you know, the, peop the Romans, uh, what they did to the Lord Jesus. But when we look at it naturally, it looks like a failure. But in the spiritual, the Lord is Jehovah Nissi. He's our victory banner. Then he goes on to say, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. He did that in the Old Testament. He brought healing upon so many people. And then in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus did so wonderfully, began to reveal himself as the Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. You know, people thronged to the Lord Jesus because why? He was healing people. It is in his nature to heal people. Right? It's his nature. He's Jehovah Rapha. You can't change it. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Right? 
when the people of Israel entered into the promised land, God gave them another covenant. He says, listen, I'll be Jehovah Shalom to you. 40 years you've been you know, wandering this desert. Your children and your generation, some of them don't even know what happened in the desert. But you've gone through a difficult time, gone through different seasons. Now I will be your Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. You know, peace is something so wonderful. And I always use this example because it makes so much sense. When we, you know, go to a beautiful place, maybe a beach or a, a very beautiful looking location, we go there, maybe at the beach, you're looking at the sunset and you feel so much at peace. There's quietness, there's breeze, it's a beautiful place. But that's not what peace is. God is saying, I am the Jehovah Shalom because the peace that I give you will pass all understanding. Which means, now we may be sitting in the beach enjoying the peace, but when you come back to the city and go through, go, go back to work and all the other things that we have to do, we may not find peace in all that. But the peace that the Lord gives us is a peace in the midst of the storm. And he says, I am the Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Then he says, I'm the Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. And I was reading this book called The Shepherd's Staff. Now, I encourage you, those who are uh, going to become pastors or pa are in pastoral care already to read this book, The Shepherd's Staff. It's a powerful, uh, uh, powerful declarations, powerful words of encouragement for pastoral ministry, especially. And in this book, the writer writes here and he says, what is the role of the shepherd? And he says, the shepherd, you know, when the when it's probably early morning, uh, the shepherd takes the sheep. And he looks after the sheep. He takes them through the waters. He takes them through mountains. Now, I'm sure you've, uh, if you see, now let me put a little context here. If you see the, in the old covenant, during the earlier times, uh, there were fields, there were mountains everywhere. It's not like there was grass growing everywhere. And so the shepherds could just take the sheep and, you know, like what we see now, they got grass growing, they go, they graze and they come back. No. When the shepherds had to take the sheep, it was a whole, you know, it was probably a whole day's work, a whole long task ahead, uh, you know, because they had to go take the sheep and find the grass. Because a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of those places uh, uh, were, had no, you know, it was more of deserts, right? And so they had to find grass. And so they would, the shepherd will lead them, take them to the, probably the mountain areas, you'll find some grass there, or they'll go back, go near the valleys. Uh, sometimes there's grass there. So the shepherd knows where to take the sheep and when to take the sheep. Now, it is said that at the, in the rainy seasons, uh, you know, the shepherd takes the sheep way up on the mountain. Why? Because you get fresh green grass there. Uh, the waters would have really soaked in into that mountain and, uh, you know, you get good uh, grass to feed on and good food to feed on for the, uh, for the sheep. And so what are we trying to bring out here? The Lord is our shepherd. He knows where to take us. He knows when to lead us, how to lead us. And he knows what's best for us. Right? Yes, we all have questions. We may all wonder, why is this happening to us? Why, why is it that I'm here? And, uh, you know, when everyone else are going ahead, listen, the Lord is our shepherd. As long as we keep our side of the covenant, the Lord will keep his side of the covenant. <laughs> Right, Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. What a powerful verse. The Lord, our righteousness. The word righteousness also refers to right standing with God. We are the righteousness of God in the new covenant. God is saying, hey, 
Jehovah said, Kenu, that's what I am. I'm a righteous God now. Through the cross, I have made you righteous. He has kept his covenant. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is present. Jehovah Sabot, the Lord of hosts. Right? Uh, when we say the Lord of hosts, it's it's more of uh, in terms of his uh, you know his power, his his might, uh, when he, uh, his his uh, his authority. That's what it uh, reveals. Jehovah Makadishem, the Lord, our sanctifier. What a wonderful covenant this is. The Lord is our sanctifier. And when we look in the New Testament, He has sanctified us by His word and His truth. What is the meaning of sanctify? Sanctified means to be set apart. In the old covenant, the Lord, the, the God, the Lord, what He did was He He chose people, He chose high priests, and He said, sanctify them for the use uh, of God. Sanctify the uh, the elements or the cups and the things that are being used in the temple. Sanctify them. Set them apart. Right? They're all holy. And so now in the New Testament, God is saying, the Lord is saying, I have sanctified you. I've already set you apart. You are already clean. How are you sanctified? By the word of and by his truth. So there will be times when the enemy may come and say, you know what, you're, you're living a sinful life. He may just expose things in our life and we may feel ashamed. But that's not the time to fall into the trap of the enemy. But we can stand up and say, hey, enemy, Jehovah is my Jehovah Makadisham, the Lord, my sanctifier. He will sanctify me. He will wash me. He will make me clean. Because that's his part of the covenant. Yes, I have failed. Yes, I have sinned. Yes, I have fallen short. But I'm part of a covenant. God will restore. The Lord is our sanctifier. Jehovah Elion, the Lord Most High. Jehovah Hosino, the Lord our Maker. Jehovah Elohino, the Lord our God. Jehovah Eloheki, the Lord thy God. Jehovah Elohe, the Lord my God. Now these last four uh, aspects or natures of God are pretty similar. Uh, but it's just de declaring who God is for the people of Israel, who God is for their nation, who God is for their personal lives. The God of the Bible has not changed through time. That's this wonderful, wonderful promise that we can hold on to. He has not changed, right? All through time, he has remained the same. All the covenant, name, covenant names given by God in the Old Testament still holds for us today. It's not like we, we can say, you know, uh, after the cross, things have changed. No. The covenant name still holds for us. It has all the power. It has all the authority even now. When we look at the Old Testament, we, we get some of the most powerful verses than, I would say, in the New Testament. Both are powerful, but there are some really wonderful passages in the Old Testament. Why? Because God has not changed. His working has not changed. I love Isaiah 65 where he goes and he says to the people of Israel, listen, you people are living in darkness. There is, there is a, there's a hole, there is darkness, there is, there's just sin everywhere around you. There's hatred, there is, you have broken your part of the covenant, you're living in uh, uh, Babylon and living in sin, worshipping their idols. But what, what did God say? God told Isaiah, and he says, The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though darkness covers the earth, and deep darkness the skies, the Lord will arise upon you. What a wonderful passage that is. We go on and we read uh, other chapters, Psalms, and when we read Jeremiah, 
powerful verses of declaration. God saying, I'm going to keep my covenant. Right? I have plans for you, plans to prosper you. That holds right now. It holds, to, it holds strong for us as well. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, that is Yahweh or Yadhe, Wadhe, I do not change. He is still Yahweh, the God of covenant. He is in covenant with us, but we as his children must understand how to live as covenant people. Maybe some of us are in a season where we, maybe we don't know what is ahead or confusion, fear. I want to encourage you, see these names. This is who God is. This is his nature. You know, sometimes we think, okay, God is holy. God is just. God is, uh, you know, uh, forgiving. No, no. He's so much more. There are so many aspects of his nature that we can claim. And the most beautiful part is that God has initiated these covenants. We are not making up things. Right? We're not saying, uh, you know, uh, this is what I feel God is. No, no. God is saying this about himself. And, and that's what he is and that's what he plans to do. Right? Uh, any questions, any thoughts, uh, share anything, uh, any questions, thoughts? Everything okay? Is, are you able to understand? Right. Should we go ahead? Okay. Uh, maybe what we can do is probably, uh, is it okay if one or two of us just uh, maybe share how, you know, uh, what nature of, you know, I, I'm sure there are many aspects that God has revealed in our life, but any testimony of maybe one of these, uh, you know, the names that we saw uh, of how God revealed himself to you in, in a particular season or maybe your own life, anything that had happened. Uh, maybe one or two of us can share how God revealed his nature to you. Is that okay? Maybe one or two of us. Uh... Anybody would like to share? Maybe it was an impossible situation. All of a sudden, God came through and made it possible or could be a healing that you have experienced being God, being Jehovah Rapha. Uh, so I just want to hear from you how, you know, God revealed himself, his nature uh, uh, through the names that we studied this morning. Uh, anyone would like to share? Okay, it's not a exam. It's not a test. It's just a uh, learn together. Um, I'll share one incident. Yes, go ahead, John. Uh, I think this was in last year. Um, so Gladys was my my wife Gladys was working in the kitchen and she cut her hand, and there was a big scar uh, with uh, oozing out a lot of blood, and she had an exam uh, the next day, uh, so she had to write the exam with that same hand itself. Um, so we we prayed um, and we declared Jehovah as a Rafa, God as a healer. And to our surprise, next day morning we couldn't even see the scar, and uh, the, she was able to write the exam very well. Amen. Wow! Praise God for that wonderful testimony. Amen. Yes, Jehovah Rafa, the God who heals. Wonderful. Anybody else would like to share? Anyone else? Let's go ahead, Zeratoli. Go ahead. Okay, um, you know, like, uh, I just want to share regarding how the Lord provided our family, you know, like Jehovah Jireh, he's our Jehovah Jireh. Like, um, for s several years, like, our family, we were in debt, you know, and we don't see the breakthrough, but, you know, we used to pray and we used to dec declare in our family prayer meetings that, uh, he is our Jehovah Jireh, and you know, supernaturally, you know, like God provided our needs, and you know, 
all those money, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, we were able to um, clear all the debts and, you know, it's just God's supernatural favor that, you know, uh, the debt, uh, uh, you know, like uh, people cancel our debt also. And it's just so amazing how God works when we declare uh, all those things, you know, so I'm so thankful to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for sharing, Zilatoli. I, I just thought, I'll, uh, since you brought this out, Jehovah Jireh, I remember reading this a um, couple of uh, years ago, but it's it's just imprinted in me, in my, uh, in my thoughts. And I always use this example because it's a wonderful example. God told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Get ready. Uh, there's a big task ahead of you. And he has Isaac. Abraham's probably very happy. The child is growing. All of a sudden, God says, take this child, go up that mountain and sacrifice him as a burnt offering to me. Now, that would have been one of the most painful things to hear as a father. Probably uh, Abraham was thinking, Firstly, God, you made a covenant with me saying that my generation will be blessed. Now, he's the only one in my generation. If I kill him, what, am I, do I have to wait another 20 years for a second son? Or probably he had all those thoughts. And secondly, he said, this is my son. How can I, how can I just kill my son, as a, give him as a burnt offering? Uh, and the writer very beautifully illustrates how faith and and God's covenant goes together. It, it's, it's just an illustration. It's just a picture that the writer had, but it made a lot of sense. It was as if the day Abraham took Isaac and he began to walk up the mountain from one end, taking Isaac, God saw that faith and he sent another you know, ram from the other side of the mountain. Right now, it's just the writer's illustration, the way he put it across, right? When God saw the faith of Abraham taking Isaac up the mountain, God sent a ram from the other side of the mountain. Now, Abraham could not see the ram that was on the other side. As he was expressing faith and walking up that mountain, the ram was walking up also. And we know that rams don't go up so high up the mountain. And at the right time, God says, I am Jehovah Jireh. Look at the ram. Take it. Sacrifice it. So sometimes we may be looking for our miracle, but we may not be able to see it. It's on the other side. God is sending it across. We just have to walk in faith. Jehovah Jireh. God who provides. Amen. Anybody else would like to share? Go ahead, Nicholson. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so I'll quickly share two things about Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Jaira. Where one is um, my wife had a problem and the, doc the doctors technically said we can't have any children. And she was at a meeting and she just but like declared that, Lord, you are my healer. And she claimed her healing in faith. And of course, now we have one boy uh, with us. And apart from that, um, the other time was we just had got married and we decided to leave our parents' place. That was my first job and it wasn't probably the best salary as such. But we still decided to step out in faith and more than half of my uh, earnings was going towards the rent and all the expenses and whatnot. And God showed, and me being young that time, I was very concerned about money. And God showed that he can provide money. Is, he's, he's our provider. Money is just the tool he uses. But like the months we ate like things, we ate so well, but there was no money in the bank. But we ate so well throughout. And the day that we stopped getting invited to people's houses for whatever uh, meals or whatnot, my salary doubled because my boss decided, okay, we're doing a good job. So he doubled my salary and we were doing well after that. So I just wanted to share that with you. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nicholson. What a wonderful testimony. Yes. Uh, uh, I'd like to emphasize one thing that Nicholson shared. You know, we have the covenant names. We have the power to declare. We have the authority to declare. God has given us the authority. He's saying, okay, you're part of the covenant. Now, it does not mean that, I'm sure all of us know this, but it does not mean that things will go smooth, right? Uh, yes, we keep declaring. We keep uh, you know, declaring it over our lives, there will be seasons that God will take us through, right? Like Nicholson was saying, we went through that season. So all of us, we probably have gone through the season or going through the season, right? Uh, maybe people in ministry, especially, they have tough times, right? But through those seasons, God begins to reveal himself, the way that he reveals himself, the, through what attribute he reveals himself, uh, God will do it in his own way. And so I want to encourage each one of us. Maybe we are going through a difficult time right now, thinking, oh, what, is, what is ahead? Maybe some of us are thinking, what is my future ahead? Got this different variants of uh, viruses and these pandemics and things that are happening around. What, what is ahead of me? Uh, Listen, remember that God is sovereign, right? And let him take you and me through seasons. It is beautiful to go through seasons because God is the one who created those seasons. He allows us to go through seasons, right? Uh, so don't let those seasons break you and feel discouraged. Yes, we may fall, but stand up again because his covenant, he will always hold firm. A covenant that is unbreakable, a covenant that is eternal. So we can call upon those, uh, it, you know, the wonderful names of God. All right. What we'll do is uh, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll take a, probably a 15-minute break. We'll come back at 11 uh, and we'll continue with our second session. See you in 15 minutes. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Yes.